choosing which FKT uh, I want to do is, is a huge part of the process. And I, I like to target ones that are really at the edge of my capabilities, ones that uh, the target time, the, the target distance are, are right about uh, what I feel I can do that is going to force me to, to push myself and, and really uh, reach for uh, what I'm capable of. It also, though, has to be something that is personally meaningful to me, that I actually care about uh, and, and that I want that goal badly enough to, to push through uh, what it's going to, to take to get there. If someone doesn't want it bad enough, it doesn't matter if they're the best athlete in the world, they're, they are going to hit a spot where so many things internally and externally are, are going to be telling them to stop. And that internal motivation uh, and, and desire really has to be there to get through that. Don't tell me you stole this brolly from I the I borrowed church. it. I borrowed it. It will you go stole. right back there on Thursday. Let's oh put God. <laughs> Don't, don't put that part in the film. <laughs> to me, the, the key is, is having someone who is able to, to focus on what's needed and, and able to adapt, particularly in longer FKTs where things are going to happen. Things aren't going to go to plan and having people there that can adapt to that and can anticipate your needs is enormous. Uh, on, on the Penine Way, when things started getting rough at the end, uh, Nikki Ligo, who was my road support throughout, was able to adapt the, the foods that she was providing me, the amount of sleep that she let me get, or that she let me think I was getting, uh, and, and giving me the, the right level of uh, encouragement and motivation to really get going and, and keep moving. I'll also add to that, it's important to come to the right level of detail, to provide them with what they need in terms of what your, your gear is, what foods you have available, what your preferences are, but it gets to a point where you can easily go into far too much detail. And that does nothing but unnecessarily stress the crew out I laugh if it's two other random runners. Oh my god, can you imagine that? What are the chances? <laughs> Probably gonna hate me for the next eight hours, but after I'm my best friend. <laughs> it's great to have uh, support runners that know you and that have been there with you before and know what kind of uh, moods and, and states that you tend to get into. It's, it's also great to have support runners who have themselves uh, been there before and, and have a bit of uh, empathy in, the, in that situation and, and know what's needed. But everyone is motivated slightly differently. Uh, some people respond really well to uh, positive encouragement. Some people respond very well to a, a drill sergeant-like mentality from uh, support runners. And it's, it's very important to communicate that beforehand and let any support runner know what you're likely to do, what you're likely to be like, and what you need. And, and I tell everyone that, that's out there with me, especially on the latter legs, um, that, you know, do what you need to. Uh, yell at me, uh, take that drill sergeant approach. I, I might hate you in the moment, but I will love you afterwards. Uh, and that just, that has to be really clear uh, up front. He's, um, he's tired and he wants to sleep. I've just, he asked me for 20 minutes, I gave him 10. Some people do quite well with uh, frequent short power naps. Uh, some people do quite well with less frequent, longer sleep. So for me, learning that appropriate balance has been quite important. Being able to anticipate when you're going to need sleep and in multi-day events, uh, getting it ahead of time before you reach that point of no return is, is extremely important. 
Uh, so if it's something that's going to be over two or three days, that's that's probably going to be three three to four and a half hours per night on the first night at least. I, I generally either do a short 15 to 20 power nap, a 40 minute nap, or if I go longer than that, I divide it into hour and a half increments because that's about how long a, a sleep cycle is. It can really do wonders for you mentally. Uh, that short of a sleep isn't going to help you physically. You just get an enormous mental refresh from that that might last an, an hour or two or, or three uh, before you really start to drop off again. But it's important to not go past that 15 minute or so length uh, because then you start to get into a deeper sleep and it's harder to come back from that. And a, a good strategy actually is to take some caffeine right before you fall asleep and it kicks in right at about the time that you're trying to wake up 15 to 20 minutes later. So that can work quite well. But he was an hour, roughly an hour ahead. He looks really strong. He's spending less than 60 seconds at every single station. I prefer to, to make myself a schedule that is um, intentionally faster than I know I'm going to be able to go because I, I know that things are going to come up, things are going to happen, uh, sleep is going to hit me, there might be a bad stretch of weather, there might just be a really low point. So by making my schedule a bit faster, uh, I'm, I'm building in buffers for those things. I'm allowing them to happen whenever they happen, instead of trying to schedule when they're going to happen. For example, on the Penine Way, I, I, my schedule had either, a, I think it was a close to a six hour buffer. And I was doing quite well uh, early on. I was actually a little bit ahead of my own schedule. Uh, and then once stomach issues really popped up, I, I looked at that buffer as essentially my, uh, my, my savings account. And I was able to, to make a withdrawal to try to reset my stomach, to try to get a bit of sleep. I lost time every time I stopped and do that. But then once I started moving again, I, I was moving on schedule. I, I wasn't losing additional time. So that was really important to me to see that, hey, I'm, I'm still able to move fast enough. I'm, I'm eating into my, my buffer a, a little bit. I'm drawing down my bank account and I can't let that get to zero. Uh, but when I'm moving, I'm, I'm still moving well and I'm, I'm still able to keep the pace. 30 miles in 9 hours and 20 minutes. It doesn't sound that bad. Okay, I can't find the crumpets. Crumpet alert! Crumpet alert! So he carries these on races, but because they squash so easily, he puts them inside the drinks bottle. So this is, again, something that is, is important that people figure out what works best for them. Uh, especially in these longer day events, when I was doing Ironmans and you know, normal ultras that uh, were, say, 10 hours or less, uh, I, I could fuel all of that off of uh, gels and uh, perpetuum and, and other liquid kind of sports nutrition. So in these, these longer efforts, there has to be more of a mix of, of real food. Uh, you've got to remember you're, you're missing actual meals. Uh, and so it's, it's not only uh, that you need more uh, food with a more complete uh, nutrition profile, but it, it's also a matter of uh, just your body and your mouth starting to become uh, very turned off to particular foods or particular tastes. and. Uh, I, I try to divide foods into uh, sweet, salty, and savory, and ensure that at any point in time, there's always an option, preferably two options from each of those categories. Because again, you, when you do these things, it's, it's crazy what your body can suddenly start hating and what it can suddenly start craving. Uh, so having uh, variety and, and availability is, is very important. And that's again, where uh, having support runners that are able to carry uh, a bit of extra uh, fuel can be extremely important.
I, I think there absolutely is an importance there of, of being able to go out and test ourselves against no one other than, than ourselves. Races are important and have their own benefits, but FKTs and, and personal challenges, even things that is maybe an OKT, an only known time, these are extremely important for really getting a good measure of how we're progressing and what we can truly do. And then it's fun to take that to a race every once in a while and, and see how that stacks up against other people.